Hi, my name is Rory Canterbury. I'm going to be your host today on Archer Talk 101. Uh, we have a special guest with us. Uh, we're going to talk archery, and uh, we're, we're both we have gray hair, so we've been doing this for a while. <laughs> yes, sir. Welcome. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, and how about if you introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are? Okay. I am uh, Spanky Brooks. Uh, I'm 68 years old. I've been shooting archery since 1980 because um, I killed my first deer with, with archery equipment in 80. Um, and I love to shoot archery. Um, I travel across country doing it. So, lot, lot of fun. I, yes, I started, it is. I started with my first bow in the 60s. So, Okay. I'm, just a, I'm just a year older than you. I'm 69. Okay. So, so we, we got the gray hairs here. Well, my mustache and beard are gray, but <laughs> my hair is, you can probably see what I have here is, let's get kind of thin, but it's still brown. <laughs> I don't have much on top, and I I did have a longer mustache, but when I shot nationals, it was so long, my bowstring was catching it, so I had to twist it up and then put a bread tie on it and curl it under my throat so my bow oh. string went. So so I trimmed it up after national. <laughs> yeah, that that's no fun if you uh, uh, have it all of a sudden catch one of the hairs on your mustache and rip them out. That don't oh, feel yes. good. <laughs> so, so what got you started in archery? Um, I don't know. Um, I've, I've always been intrigued with it, you know, and growing up, I had the old, uh, uh, PS or Ben Pearson fiberglass bow that yeah. I would play with. And, uh, then, uh, I'd seen, a deal, um, Walmart had a sale on, uh, the old bear whitetail two compound. Right. And, and I bought one of them and that started uh, so i mean i shoot pretty good with it i end up killing i don't know seven or eight deer with the old bear whitetail two bows so but well, i, I, I kind of started about the same i i started with uh ben pearson 25 pound recurve mine was uh a kind of a yellow color and then my yeah. brother bought the whitetail two so that's the first compound i shot for for a while <laughs> right yep yeah that was that that was days when there wasn't much there because the compounds didn't even really start until the 70s before they even really yeah. started coming out and uh you know then you know from what they started off with to what they're doing now that's amazing how much they've uh, uh improved yes the performance and shootability and everything else on them yeah so tell us about that first hunt where you got to kill your first deer. Um, well, it 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 was a uh, matter of fact. My first one I killed was a record buck. It was eleven point, scored one hundred and thirty eight and three eighths inches. Um, but it was the worst shot. Um. I'd been, I was running late that morning, and so I didn't even really have a place to, to hunt. I found an evergreen, and I backed into it, but it was so cold and frosty that the ground was frosted. It looked like snow, because you could see my, <laughs> my footprint, and uh, I mean, I was so green at this time. I took a thermos with hot chocolate in it. You know, I was going to have that while I was out there. And uh, anyway, I had to step forward to look out, and I spotted the buck coming. And when he came in, I had turned right in front of a smaller evergreen, and he stopped with his body behind the evergreen and was sniffing my track. And I was full of draw, and I thought, man, take a step, take a step. Well, when he did, I shot. And I thought, oh my God, uh, that was a bad hit. I hit him 
right in front of the back leg and a little high. And of course, I almost wanted the ball because I knew I just wounded one. Yeah. And I, through my head, I thought, okay, I've seen blood. So, and, you know, I'll go trailing. What I ended up doing was taking it, I took the artery under the backbone and I also took the artery out in the opposite leg. He only ran 50 yards. And oh. I mean, there was splattered everywhere. So, and uh, that was my, my first year with a bow. And uh, he was huge. And I had to load him in the back of my truck by myself. Oh. So I lowered the tailgate. And I stuck his horns in the tailgate. And then I got up in the truck and then hooked my feet, grabbed his horns. And I pulled him up over the top of me. And uh, he was so big, I had uh, an old GMC pickup, eight-foot bed. And getting his head wedged up in the corner, I had to slam his butt with a tailgate. He was oh. over t- long hanging in the, in the barn. So, yeah, he was huge. Yeah. So that was my huge. Yeah. Oh, what a first year, huh? Yes. Yep. Yeah, my, my mine wasn't quite so, quite so big. Mine mine was doe. I shot quite a few does before I ever shot a buck, and you know, I I right. go out hunt for does, but you know, buck comes by, I'll I'll take them as long as I got tag for them. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had wounded two does earlier. One was in the lower front leg and then one was in the, the shoulder blade. Uh, so when I hit this one that far back, I thought, oh my God, now I just wounded the third deer. But but it when it takes the arteries out, they, they don't go very far. No, no. I I actually, uh, that's sorry for during time, but I actually got one that way too. It got in the back artery and Got it, and it didn't go very far. <laughs> no, nope, they don't. N- not the spot I'm sh- want to shoot for, but you know that's that that's a different story <laughs> on how I ended that's up fine. getting that. <laughs> it it worked. <laughs> yeah, it, it works, but not not how you want to do it because it's a little bit lower percentage. But hey, sometimes when we're starting out, we get what we get. You know, you you practice all you can that's- and. You know, things still go wrong. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's uh it's kind of interesting. Oh. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can monitor the uh um monitor the uh, live because we went live in, in my um timeline and I'm just trying to figure out how to monitor if anybody makes any comments <laughs> i never okay. know before so i'll figure out so if i'm looking off the side i'm trying to see if there's any comments coming through and and there there was one. Oh, yeah and then i have to listen to myself talk so no no, no comments so we're okay <laughs> So if I if I see any comments, I'll I'll kind of pass them on. Who knows? But okay, we're, we're, we'll go from there. So what kind of equipment are you shooting now? Are you shooting traditional or? Shooting uh, I'm shooting classified as bare bow. I have okay. a twenty uh, inch CD riser with Eucla limbs. Uh, I'm pulling thirty eight four pounds. Uh, shooting victory arrows and uh, Yotes tab. So it the the setup I have has been working very well. So yeah, that, that's that's the key is is get something that works for you that that fits you and you like and it likes the way you shoot and right. Yep. Well, I shot uh, compound for 20 years when I first started, and then uh, I got invited to a traditional shoot and had to borrow a bow, and I ended up winning the tournament, 
and I've almost I've never looked back for a compound uh, because the the challenge was there. You know, I was right. I was shooting almost bullet holes at out to thirty yards with compound, and then when I shot traditional, it went to the size of a basketball, and <laughs> yeah. I thought, oh, man. Yeah, it hit the challenge. So, um, so that uh, I've been shooting traditional 24, 25 years now. So, and then Barebo, I think it's only been about five years. Yeah, that's kind of a um, a theme I hear quite a bit where. You know, you, you start with the archery with the compound, or, or sometimes you start with the longbow or, or recurve and go to the compound. And then you know, after a while, you know, like you said, you know, it's it's not really a whole lot of challenge because, uh, you know, at, at 20 yards, you're sticking them all in the X ring. And and, and then uh, you go out to 30 and you're still in there and, you know, you're still in the white spot, you know, clear out to 30 and 40 yards. And, and you know, then, you know, what's the next challenge? Go into... Uh, uh, a recurve because it there's you know especially if you're not using any sights you know the olympics right. they, they use sights on them but i'm not interested in olympic style archery you know for me to do it it's i, I like watching it it's kind of cool how you know how they they're they're doing all that and and watching some of their form and and the release techniques and you know a lot of it you can take that and adapt it to you know any you know traditional bow yes yep exactly I just anchor in a different spot. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> you know, they anchor so low down at their chin. I anchor, you know, anchor finger corner of my mouth. And, and that just gives me a little better reference than, you know, down here for me is, like, but they use a clicker. So they know they're at full draw when the clicker goes off. So, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. Right. As soon as the clicker goes off they're they're releasing, you know, it's that, that's that tight click gone. <laughs> Uh -huh. it's, like, it's like that's their trigger see, to fire. <laughs> yes. And see, in Barebo, we're not allowed that. So it's got to be, I mean, they, they they come out with clickers that can go on in your hand on the, the riser and stuff. But I, I do not have anything that tells me to let go. My brain tells me. Yeah. Right. So. One less piece of equipment to fail. That's right. Yes. Yeah, we we fail up here in the head enough without having another piece to to fail on us. <laughs> so, do you, do you do a lot of hunting with your your equipment now, or mostly just target? Uh, not not that particular setup, but I have a. Uh, 25 inch CD with wind wind limbs on it. Um, when they're cranked down, I'm pulling 45 pounds, and that's what I hunt with. It, the rest and the plunger are the same as my target, um, but a little shorter bow, more powerful. Now, here in Kansas, we can buy more than one deer tag. And a few years ago, before I got into the bare bow side, I shot wooden bows that I had made. Um, John Holson Richter here in Wichita, Kansas, built bows. And I own nine of them now, something like that. And so what I would do is, is when I'd kill a deer, I would put that wood bow down, pick up a different one, practice it, kill deer with it, put it down and maybe go to a longbow and kill one, put that one down and I pick up a self bow and shoot a deer with it. So um yeah, I mean I, I can use a wood bow or I can use my metal risers. It it don't really make a difference. That that makes it, you know, that's because then you can grab any bow and no matter which one you have, you know you're proficient with it to, you know, that you can yeah hit the target you're aiming at you know that's right yeah we don't like too many more wounded deer do we <laughs> no sir 
you, you get a couple of them though those those weigh on you for a long time that that you you wounded it and and wasn't able to recover yeah. it and, yeah we, we've all had a few of those you know if you've hunted more than one day you've you've probably got one that that you've hit and not recovered and and you know it, it's you just kind of kick yourself especially when you come across it the next time you're out and it was 30 feet from where you stopped looking because <laughs> it was night yep. and you're going along no blood you haven't seen any blood for a long time and you're going along and then ne next you come back next week and it's like what's that smell and you're like yeah that's the deer you shot that's right yes yep as they can they can definitely hide on you pretty easy especially that that's why i, I actually prefer morning hunts over evening hunts um but the hunting partner I was going with all the time, he did the evening hunts. And, you know, just for that, because you're losing the light, I'd rather be gaining the light. But early season, got to deal with the heat. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You don't have much time to get out there and and recover it. If you don't get it within a, you know, a couple hours, it can, you know, start going bad on you. Especially, That's right. Especially up here. Well, you're in Kansas. I'm in Nebraska. So. You know, early season, our starts in September. I, I don't remember your starts October. When your uh, starts? It's, it, yeah, the last couple of years, it started uh, the middle of September. Oh, yeah. That's where I used to be, the 15th of September. Then they changed the 1st of September. It's still hot in, in September. <laughs> yes, and, then, and you got to find them right away or the heat destroys them. Yeah. At least at night it is cooling off, but you still don't have you still can't let them sit all night, you know, because it might get down to sixty <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah, <laughs> and that's not cold enough. Now, when it get into regular, you know, November time frame, yeah, we're getting cool enough that it would be okay the next day. But you know, you hate to leave leave it the you know all the guts inside. You know, that's where yes. it starts. That's yep. where it gets all that gamey taste to it if you leave those in too long you know, the key is just That's get it clean right. as quick as you can <laughs> you uh -huh. get it feel dressed and clean and cool down and and get the cape off and first nugent used to say yeah uh, take his jammies off <laughs> that's right <laughs> he's definitely got a uh definitely a hunting attitude and a lot of, a lot of good songs about hunting <laughs> that's right yep yeah, we, we remember old Ted Nugent. Yes. Yep. We grew up listening to his stuff. I actually got a chance to meet him a couple times. They had an outdoor um, event uh, at the auditorium here. Uh, a whole bunch of outdoor stuff. And he come down a couple of years. And I got to meet him and talk to him a couple of times. And interesting guy. Yeah. So what's been your um, most memorable hunt that you've been on? Um, really, it was my last year that I ever went elk hunting. Um, I was packing a longbow with wood else. Um, now I kind of wish I'd had stone points, but I didn't. I had steel points. And I come up just a, a little incline, and there was a big, uh, I call it the nevergreen, but one of the uh, pine trees there. And as I stepped up the air, I spotted the cows, uh, elk, and there was 20 of them. And at that particular moment, I had three under 20 yards on me. I oh. had a cow and a calf feeding towards me, straight towards the tree. But the one cow that I thought about shooting, I was going to have to twist and I didn't want to move. So I was looking at the one behind her and she fed in a little bit. She finally turned broadside. And when she did, I took a 12 yard shot and heart shot her and the cow and, air and calf that was coming to me was just on the other side of the tree from me. 
I mean, they huh. were probably within less than 10 feet. And the whole woods exploded. <laughs> <laughs> but I killed a cow elk with a longbow with wood arrows at 12 yards. That That's close. Yes. Yes, yeah, it was. That's close. Yeah, and, and they've got a, you know, fairly decent size uh, kill zone. So, you know, you've got, you know, a little bit of leeway, but 12 yards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. That, exactly. that, would, that would be, that'd be a lot of fun. Uh-huh. So you've been on many elk hunts or was that your first one or? Uh, no, I I had hunted elk for no, no, 18 years, 20 years. It took oh. like uh, five years before I ever got my first one. Um, but then after that, then they seemed to come easier. I ended up killing two bulls and three cows in the years that I elk hunted. Well, that's quite a bit. That's elk meat. Oh, I, yeah. Elk meat, I think, is pretty good. I, I, haven't, I haven't had any. I've had moose, uh, which is really oh. good. But uh, um, I went up in Canada moose hunting and, and okay. got, a, got a moose, got a cow moose. And yep, I, was, I would love good. to. Do that. And then also um, grizzly, huh? That be on the ground. I would like to stalk them. Oh, yeah. That, 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 it hmm. depends on where you're at. The guy may still carry a big gun. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> But that's two of the hunts I would like to go on, yeah. That would be uh, quite a challenge to get close enough to a grizzly um, and not have them know you're there and take them with a longbow or, or yes. a recurve, yeah. That would be definitely uh, interesting. It, it, if yes, you get on one of those calls, you have, you have to get back on here and tell us about it. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to hear that story when, when you get up there and get that grizzly and all the challenge it was. And yeah, that would be. That's right. That be fun. <laughs> I always like hearing all the hunting stories and, yeah, you know, even, even, you know, that don't have to be hunting stories, you know, just some of your, your target. Do you, uh, do, you do much target shooting or more just. Oh, um, yes. I uh, uh, travel to a lot of big, uh, target shoots. Um, I'm very competitive. Um, I, uh, matter of fact, I just got back Monday from going to Texas. I went down there and shot the Texas Ringer. Uh, it's an indoor shoot, and uh, I ended up taking second. I got beat by one point. Uh -huh. um, me and the other guy shot off. Um, uh, I shot, uh, what, three times now, four times I've shot uh, target nationals. That's 55 yards, 50 meters. Um, two years ago, I won uh, the master's division. Um, and I've taken second in the U.S. Open twice or three times um, this year. I got in on the shoot off. I was one of the, I was took fourth in the US Open, uh, but I was shooting in the seniors group. That is the young kids. Um, now, if I had stayed in Masters, the score I put up, I would have won nationals and Masters, but I'd, you know, switch classes. So, um, Yes, I I go to Lancaster, I go to Vegas, I go to Mount Rushmore in Yankton, um, Iowa Pro Am, you name it. I I try to go to it. <laughs> now, for the listeners that are not sure what the different classes are between seniors and masters, well, what is the age break between the two? Uh, okay, masters is supposed to be fifty or above. Once you're in 50, you can go into the masters. The seniors is from 18 to 50. Um, if they're younger than 50, they can't go into the masters, but a masters can drop down. And uh, that's what I did this year for target nationals. 
a little, little more challenging, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, you know, it's sometimes, you know, if you're you're in there and you're always winning the division, sometimes it's nice to be able to just go to a different division and challenge yourself a little bit more. Yes, sir. Yep. It's kind of always nice to drop down. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, see every when I shoot the Iowa Pro Am, there is only a couple guys in what they call seniors and master seniors and and all that um but i have always shot in what they call the adult group that's 18 to i think 50 because there's more of them and then that way i have a challenge um uh, i i don't want to go there to and win it because i was the only one in the group you know yeah i, I want the challenge of beating them so Yeah, I know sometimes, it, you know, you, you could get first place at something. When, and I remember when I was competing in, in roller skating, I went there and there's the, in the division I was in, there was one guy, me, and one girl, the same division. So we combined them. I'm like, I'd rather skate and, and get second than have nobody to compete against and get first. That's right. Play. Anyway, yeah. but still, you know, it's it's one of those things that, you know, what what's the advantage if you have at least beat somebody to get the um you know to, to get the place you know if, if you're the only one you're last place you're in last place uh, you're also in first place but you're in last place because <laughs> there's only one right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah think of it that way i'd rather come in second than last uh-huh yeah <laughs> so so do you do a lot of uh, 3D shoots as well then, or just the, the indoor or the targets or? Um, I shoot 3D. I kind of travel the big ASA shoots. Uh, I shoot Louisiana, Kentucky, Illinois. Um, I've been to Alabama a few times, but that's towards the end. And I normally don't go to them. I, I shoot like three of the big ASA shoots. I try to shoot as many local uh, 3D tournaments here, um, but with a lot of the big shoots going on, uh, I don't get to shoot the locals as much because the bigger shoots are going on. Yeah, it's you, you can't go to the little ones if you want to really improve, and, and when you got the bigger ones, it's it's probably a whole whole different experience going to the the big shoots it is to go into just the little local shoots. Yes. And also the local shoots is I am about the only one that shoots bare bow uh, in Kansas. There is a couple others that do make a few shoots. So I have to shoot against traditional guys and the equipment I am using versus the the traditional um that's like a cadillac versus a volkswagen and so if if anybody gets within 50 points of me at the locals they think they've had a good day you know so it's not challenging uh, but when i go to the asas i'm shooting against guys that are shooting the same equipment i am and younger and uh they kind of show me how it's done at times yeah yeah they the kids that some of them are, are really good at such a really young age and, and of course yeah you know as we get older we have other things that's a little bit harder for us to do and um you know a little harder to hold steady and harder to see the targets yeah. yes sir that's a big one there <laughs> yeah I, I i i don't take the the long shots anymore because uh, one right now my pins are so blurry i can't i can't see them i gotta get different glasses but at the distance i can't see them anyway so um but right, right now I, yep. i'm i'm recovering from a surgery so 
I can't even draw my bow back. So. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. I, I might have to break out my my left. I'm right hand. I got a left handed um, recurve. Um, a, a takedown one that when I had my store, they sent me a left hander and a right handed box, and I just never sent it back. It's, but I don't have a string for it, so I have to make a string and. I might just start shooting left-handed because it's like 25 pound bow. My other recurve is 40 or 45. And I know there's no way I'm going to be able to pull it back. I just barely lift 25 and 30 pounds right now. Yes, sir. Well, matter of fact, I'm in the same bow, but my problem is, is I have rheumatoid arthritis. It's yeah. in my knees and in my hands. And my String hand, my knuckles swell. My hand gets to almost not quite twice the size and very painful. So I don't know how many more years, if any, that I can still shoot right-handed. So I picked up a left-handed riser, and I am in the process of teaching myself to shoot left-handed right now. Now, the tournament I just come back from, I shot right-handed. My hand doing real good. As uh, long as my right hand works and don't screw up, then I'll shoot right-handed. But I also want to get very efficient shooting left-handed. So I can shoot either, either bow when I go to a tournament. Yeah, that gives you an option. You can take both bows. So if all of a sudden, your right hand start giving you problems. You know what are you going to do? You know you you can't drop. You don't want to drop out of the tournament. You spent all that time and money getting there. Um, That's so. Yeah, that would be that'd be something. That's what I'm thinking about doing. Um, I've shot compounds, left handed compounds, and it's just it's just a matter of it's a little different. The only thing is, you know, with right eye dominant, you, that right eye picks up the pins. Um, yeah. And, now my right eye is blurry so and i see two sets of pins but my mind has blocked out the the dimmer set of pins so okay when when my right eye started getting uh foggy that's how i shot that one deer in the, the artery like you did is i drew back on it and that pin i know that pin was right on right where it's supposed to go and i hit clear back this what's going on so i went down to the range and and i normally practice with my left eye closed just because it's, you know, I'm I'm worrying about, you know, I'm developing my skill to get better. So I shot with both eyes or the left eye closed and nailed the target. Now it's a five spot and I shoot into upper right hand target, open up both eyes. I missed the target. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I missed it. That's how far I was at 20 yards. I missed the whole target to the left because my my left eye was now picking up the pins and so i closed my eye back on open it up and then i figured okay so what's going on and then i noticed uh, it's because i used to just blink my left eye until it forced me to focus on the right eye pins and then i discovered one time when i had a hooded sweatshirt on i turned my head and the hood doesn't move your head moves inside blocked my left eye so i know if i gotta shoot i gotta have a hooded shirt on or a hood so i can block my left eye <laughs> Right. Yep. Well, once I went into a bear bow, I started shedding my left eye. So to me, now when I when I draw, it automatically shut. Now shooting left-handed, I have to shut my right eye because right. I'm right eyed. Yeah, there's. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll we'll both have to do that. You know, try and figure out how to do. It. Although right now. My left eye is a clear one, so my mind's going to ignore everything out of the right eye anyway. And last times I find them, I'll, I'll be reading stuff or something. I got my right eye closed because I can make see better with the right eye closed and the left one because the the right one's so blurry that it blurs everything. And yeah, okay, yep. the The problems of getting in your sixties, isn't it? Yes, sir. It is. Yeah. Well. We'll work around it. I, I'll I'll get that one out, and I'll probably start with that one just to um, do it. But once I get to where I can have enough upper body strength where I can do that, I'm going to rehab so that you know we got on a little bike where we're, we're using the arms and 
and then going both ways. And I'm I'm doing about two two and a half minutes each way, and yeah, it makes them sore. <laughs> oh yes, yes sir. Yeah, it makes them sore, and there's not much pressure, so it's just pretty easy, you know. There's not a lot of force in there, and you know, going through all that is is tough and. Yeah, but, yeah, that was like when I had, see, I've had uh, rotator cup surgery done on my right shoulder seven years ago. And then a couple of years later, my left rotor cuff. And then uh, last September, uh, I tore my bicep tendon in my left arm. And so I was down again. Um, and now when... My right arm was down. My surgeon told me the deer season was out. And I go, no, it's not. And he goes, yes, it is. Um, I come home and took my bow and put a mouth tab on it. And I killed two of my deer shooting with my mouth uh, with <laughs> my bow. Um, it, and I even took video of, it, of me shooting it. And took it to him that I was, that's how I was going to kill my deer. Um, <laughs> then Is it... when I had my shoulder done, I borrowed a left-handed bow, used the mouth tab, and I killed one of my two deer with that. Um, now, last year, I didn't borrow the bow when I had bicep tendon and left arm. I was using a right-handed bow in the wrong hand with a mouth tab and i wounded a uh, 130 class buck i hit him in the shoulder blade and uh, i come home told the wife i says that ain't cutting up so i dug my crossbow out and finished my deer season with a crossbow last year uh, so yeah i've um i've been told i'm a diehard but uh god i love shooting and i'm gonna shoot any way I can shoot, so. Well, and and kind of like you, you pulled out the crossbow because, you know, that's a valid weapon. And um, I, I say this on a lot of podcasts. My definition of archery is a, sting, a stick with a string flinging another stick. And crossbow right. does that. It fits that category. So um, I even posted that <laughs> one time just to see. Now, prove me wrong. You know, I, I said that and prove me wrong. Nobody commented because you can't. That's archery. That's right. It's just some sticks are a lot more fancy and some strings are a lot more fancy, but that's the, right. Yeah. The stick might be made out of more than wood, but except traditional guys, it's the only ones that use wood. Right. Yep. I had one guy used to come in my story as a crossbow and I had wooden arrows for it, but it was, you know, not, not the hunting weight bows. You know, it was a fairly light weight bow and, and he used wooden arrows for that, but actually wooden bolts are not arrows for crossbows, but technical. <laughs> That's right. So what do you have what do you have planned for uh, some of your hunts or hunts coming up this season? Do you have anything planned? Uh, just just deer season. Uh I've already got my uh, stands up and I got some feeders out um, and my cameras. I've got one real nice buck on there. He's about a 30 class buck. I only have him on it one time, but um, I am a meat hunter. Uh, I, I buy my buck tag and a doe tag, and uh, but I will put doe in a freezer. If I shoot the buck, uh first then he'll go in the freezer but if it's second uh i have people that uh can't hunt and love deer and i will give them the deer so um it, it just local as soon as i uh kill my deer then i will start practicing for all my indoor shoots um my first one will come up other than one i just did but um, the first one will be the first cup, second weekend of December. And then at the end of December is I will pro am. First January is Yankton and uh, then Lancaster. So 
I got to make sure I'm good for them because I'm I'm going against all these young bucks that are uh, real good shooters. I mean, real good shooters. They make me work for it. So yeah, hey, you're you're going to compete in the senior division again. Yep. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice. I I know sometimes getting in the senior divisions is. It can be a lot of fun, a lot of challenging, right. really challenging. Yeah. But I know when and I was speed what... skating for many years, I was I had skate senior division because I wasn't old enough. Then about the time I got old enough to go into the next level up, uh, I wasn't skating competing anymore. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, because I was always, you know, probably good almost 10 years older than the seniors and you know that's tough to keep up with you know they're yes they're 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 young they got all this the stamina they got you know they got their you know and archie they got the the skills and yeah it's it's kind of tough <laughs> that's to right some of yeah. those kids sometimes but it's always fun when 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 you're twice their age or three times their age that they can't keep up with you uh -huh. that's fun like, what are you struggling for, kid? I'm three times your age. What's your problem? <laughs> or I'm uh -huh. double your age. <laughs> Can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, those those ways kind of fun times when you can do that. Oh yeah. So you're you're just gonna hunt deer most of this year in Kansas, then, or are you going elsewhere? Or? No, just here in Kansas. Just Kansas. Yeah, it's uh, the wife and I now. All the kids have moved out, so we don't need a lot of deer meat. Um, I still, we still have deer and and uh, I hog hunt. I went to Oklahoma and got a hog last year. So, um, so yeah. I, so I'm just gonna be local and and uh, shoot one deer. I'm hoping two, but you know, at least one deer this year. Yeah, and that'll that'll last, you know, two people that lasts quite a while and uh, unless you get a little bitty one, but I know when I first yeah. you know, first got a first deer, it, it lasted us a whole year, you know, and that was with the you know, the uh the kids and my wife and I. And then after we learned how to fix it and and then, you know, now then one deer wouldn't last a whole year and in fact, I had when I had my moose, the, moose, the, fr the freezer was full, and I had deer in there, and I got another deer, and there was no room in the freezer, so I'm starting to make a um, jerky out of it, and about a week that whole deer was gone. <laughs> oh yes, yes, sir. yeah, yeah. We we use a, a beef brisket marinade that we'd marinate them in, so the you know the traditional. Uh, jerky mixes um this is a beef brisket um it was claude's sauce that was out of i think el paso texas is where it come from and we'd soak that in that and and put it in dehydrator and yeah no yeah dehydrator and and make jerky and about time it's ready they're eating it and i'm making another batch and they're eating it and <laughs> yes sir yeah it went it went quick oh yes i bet yeah, this, the the best deer I ever had was uh, shot a deer, um, kill it, come home, field dressed it, pulled the back straps out, threw them on the grill, and then I'm out there with I got the knife and the fork with me, and I'm you know got, the back straps always taper down, so they always would cook more on the ends. So okay, those ends mm -hmm. are done. Fork cut, eat, cut the four corners off, and cooked a little bit more. Cut the four corners off. <laughs> yeah, I had him right off the grill. I'd put the fork in it, cut it, and eat it right off the grill. <laughs> and, and had yep. it, it was it was a move on that deer not too long earlier. And I just yeah, it, it's, yeah. It, you come home and it's okay. You cleaned up, pull them out, and throw them on the grill. <laughs> yeah, kind of your, your yep. trophy for for getting the deer. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Eat them tenders right away. <laughs> That's right. So how, how do you normally fix your deer? 
Um, I leave that up to the wife. She oh. is a very, very good cook. Everything we uh, let's put it this way: very little comes out of a box or a can. She does. She makes everything. She makes her own bread or biscuits. You know, rolls. Um, I have real mashed potatoes. You know, she peels them and gets them going. And I should weigh 400 pounds the way she cooks, but I guess I got a high metabolism. And so, you know, I, I can keep my weight down. But yeah, she makes everything from scratch. It's just, um, I'm glad I married her. Matter of fact, uh, today, we have been married 44 years. So, oh, well, wow. uh, congratulations. Put her, uh, let us meet. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that, that I think is the key to, you know, all the weight gain is because, you know, a lot of the processed stuff, you know, like the beef, they got growth hormones. And, you know, I guess why kids are getting bigger. And then, um, you know, when I was a kid, we never heard of, kids getting cancer and right. now you're hearing it you hear it all the time you got kids getting cancer and everything else and you know what's the difference between now and and 20 years ago you know or 30 years ago you know we we grew up in the 50s and 60s and you never heard of anybody you know kid getting cancer even not really many adults would and, and then, that's right and, and they weren't overweight you know it's very few people that were you know, overweight and fat. And now, you know, there, I think there's a huge number of people that are way overweight. And, and I think it's got to do more with all the processed foods and instead of just like, like your wife, you know, you're lucky that, you know, fix everything gets fixed from scratch. And, and I think it yeah. tastes much better, you know? Yeah. There's, I agree. Nothing, nothing better than uh, uh, when I was a kid, we'd, Get the get the milk from the farm, and we'd scoop off the cream off the top, and yes. we'd make butter out of it. We'd make yes. bread and, and make and not buy loaves. So you, you you fresh bake. You let it rise and you cut it and you cut it off while it's still hot and and put that butter on there and eat it. And it's like, yeah, a loaf of bread don't last long that way. When it's hot no. out of the oven, oh man, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. And even to this day, yes, it, I'll put butter on stuff, but I won't put any margarine. I'll go without before I use margarine or any of it. Oh, what is margarine? It's it's one step off of plastic. That's right. And I, I agree with you. We of course we we were born about in this, you know, the same era, this year yeah. apart. So yeah, we think a lot alike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you said you were 68, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we're I'm only a year older than you. I was 50, March of 55, and and you were in. Yeah. So I'm June of, of six. six. So. Oh, okay. Yep. So. Just, just a little bit off, not quite a year, but yep. pretty much difference. So, yeah, your birthday's gonna just not too far away, but you know, I'll be 70 in March, and then you'll be 69. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, um, th I think that was kind of a um, more fun time than what it is now. We don't have all this other crap going on, and you know, you could feel safe to walk around. And you know, when when I was in, until I was in the middle of fifth grade, um, I went to school. The school was a mile away, and yeah. here I'm in uh, here I'm in kindergarten, and I'm walking I'm walking to school and walking home. You know, it's a, it was a mile away. I'm like, oh, no big deal. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you didn't yeah. have to worry about it. That's right. Yes. Although yeah, I live in the do. village, so we're, we're we're fairly safe here. We can leave our doors open and nothing really bothers us here. But it's a little small village, so there's not really any reason to drive here <laughs> or through here. Uh huh. Because we're a mile off the main highway, <laughs> and there's only three roads that the main blacktop one coming in, 
And then the other two ways out is on gravel roads. <laughs> That's right. Well, I always lived in the country growing up. So uh, matter of fact, from the main road, we we had a lane that was almost a half mile down to the house. And uh, so we'd have to walk that every morning to, to meet the school bus to go yeah. to school. So, and we would leave in the mornings after first light and, and uh, get back home just right before dark, you know, so. Yeah, it keeps, keeps you in shape all that walking. That's right. Then we get older and walking starts to be a challenge sometimes. <laughs> That's right. Now we have to walk to keep things moving, oiled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sit for a while and it's hard getting up and then it's like it start moving. And it, I've kind of always been that way. If I sit too long, I get stiff. You know, even when yeah. I was I was speed skating. And if I'd sit very long and, and, you know, like we're traveling to an event or something and I get out of the car, I look like an old man getting out of the car. So I just sit there, got so stiff and, and you sit and like your legs will start hurting because from not moving. And that's right. you see that a lot of athletes use their legs a lot. If they get laid up, they start having cramps in the legs because they're used to being moved. And yeah, you know. It's 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 hard to sit. <laughs> That's right. And unfortunately, but right now, fortunately, I have a job I can sit down at it. Because <laughs> if I couldn't sit down, I, I wouldn't be able to do it very good. <laughs> That's right. Yep. So um, let's see. Some other questions. Um what what advice would you give somebody that's you know wanting to pick up you know one of the the trad bows of of some kind and you know how would how would you recommend them getting started? Um, I mean if if they're wanting to do it, uh, I tell you what the way traditional people are nowadays. If you're at a local shoot, whatever, um, and you ask one of them if they can shoot their bow. Uh, I don't know of anybody that would not allow them to shoot their bow. I mean, I would. Uh, and let me see what it's like and, you know, go from there. And if it is something they like and want to do, um, there, there are so many options out there. Uh, you know, you just talk to the traditional people and and they can lead them in the right direction. One of the real big things to me uh, is do not get overbowed. Start lighter and work your way up. Uh, when I started traditional, my recurve was 86 pounds. Uh, I'd been shooting an 80 pound compound. Um, I took the bow back to the guy that built it and he sanded it down. The first year of competition, local and hunting, I was shooting a 76 pound recurve. Um, now, if I get over 38 or 40 pounds, I'm thinking, oh my God, I pull this thing. <laughs> so, uh, but you start bad habits if you're over boat. So always start yeah. lighter. And the way a lot of these bows are made now, you can get them where you can buy different limbs and put on them if it's got the ILF on it. Uh, it don't have to be a, a, a metal riser. It can still be a wood bow. There's a lot of them being made out there where you can put different limbs on. And as you get better or stronger, then you can go up in weight. So, but yeah, too many people started overbowed and it makes bad habits real quick. Yeah, it does because you can't draw back to your anchor point. I, I've seen you know, archers shooting them and they draw back and they're they're about an inch and a half, two inches away from their, their mouth because 
they can't pull it any further. And that, you know, that, you know, yeah. you come, you, you don't have a consistent release and, and yeah. Uh, I just say the same thing, you know, you know, traditional or compounds either way, you know, if you can't slowly bow that, pull that bow back, it's too much weight for you. You know, if you can't That's come right. back to your anchor point and hold for, you know, three seconds, it's too much weight for you. Um, That's right. Yeah, you know, it teach that, you know, with a compound and a release, you pull back and once you start your shooting process, you know, about three seconds. If it has gone off in three seconds, you might need to let down and start over because something ain't right. And and if you can't pull that that bow back and let it sit there, uh, if you're you're getting back and it's gone up before you even get to your anchor point. Now I go back, hit my anchor point, and I don't really stay. I hit the anchor point and then I follow on through. You know, I just a little hesitation. You know, I don't want to sit there and right. hold it all day long because I've already found my spot. Now then it's too easy for me to just wander around and start thinking about something else while I'm up there, you know? That's <laughs> right. I don't have yeah. any pins because I, I, when I shoot um, my recurve, I focus on where I want the arrow to go. I think of nothing else. And I go back and I use the same grip on it as I do with my compounds, well, which I don't grip, but I mean, you know, I still go through, right. you know, my hand and at an angle which puts my arm out of the way so i don't use arm guards because i don't grip it like a bat right yep i don't either i should open handed but i still have to wear an arm guard because i will lightly hit my arm and after about 20 shots that gets very tender yeah yeah, yeah. and that's why in traditional bows you, you serve you serve uh, from the center up three and down six because that's what rubbing on your arm guard. And if you don't do that, then you wear the string. And the compounds, you only need, you know, maybe a uh, half inch or so above and below where you knock the arrow, you know, tie your loop on because uh, you're not hitting anything. Uh, lighter yeah. string, faster, faster bow. But, you know, let's not talk about how, how fast bows Everybody wants fast bows, and they make them harder and harder to shoot. <laughs> a short, yeah. fast bow is the most difficult bow to shoot. <laughs> yes. Now, see, when I shot compound, I found out that if I got over 265 feet per second, my accuracy opened up. Um, my pattern opened up. If I yep. stayed under 260... I could put them in there all all day long, but um, so yeah, it to me it's not the speed, but you know these bows nowadays are three hundred feet per second or better, and I'm thinking, wow, you know it's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, and I I found with uh, um, I shoot muzzies. It's the only broadhead I've ever shot, you know, at muzzies. That's recommended to me when I got my first bow and. And I've just always had really good luck with them. And, um, you know, I've stuck a muzzy in a concrete block and didn't hurt the muzzy. <laughs> so that yeah. tells you it's a tough broadhead. But, um, you know, the faster you get that arrow going, the harder and harder it is for that broadhead to actually stabilize. Because you got the wings yes. up front and the fletching in the back. And I use feathers, orange feathers. Um, I've used them since the 60s. And I... I me, I, I'm not fond of veins. <laughs> I just like the feathers. So I still shoot feathers. And uh, um, yeah, when you're out in the rain, you have to deal a little bit more with them, but you can put some stuff on it if you're going to be out in the rain a lot. But I just keep them in quiver. And if it, the one I am have on my bow gets too, too waterlogged, I just take it out and change arrows <laughs> to, to a yeah. dry one. You know, if I've gone through six arrows, it's like, and I still haven't seen anything. Oh, yeah, it's either raining too hard or it's time to go home. And if it's That's raining right. that hard, you 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 can't track them anyway because the, the blood's all washed away. That's right. Yep. So, you know, talking about the fast bows, I've always had a saying, you know, the faster the bow, if you make a bad shot, it just means you miss faster than I do, you know. So. Well, the, the faster bows exaggerate your errors. Yes. You know, and and the slower bow is a little more forgiving. And, you know, if you don't have that perfect form, 
and you're trying to send that that arrow at you know over 300 feet per second uh you're gonna have have some problems controlling it and then you put a broadhead on it even though the mechanicals say you know they start just like field tips no are they close that's at hunting range yeah but do they fly the mm -hmm. same no because your arrow is actually longer and you do have a little bit of wings up there now hopefully you have enough fletching in the back that it doesn't affect it but um you know that's that's one of the things that i did with my bow i hunt with is I actually got the broadhead set up so I can shoot X's with the broadhead. Now, if I put right. field tips on it, oh, I'm not even close. That's right. But I don't care because that bow is for shooting broadheads. I don't shoot anything else out of it except, you know, warming up to use that. And I know it's not going to hit in the same spot, and I don't care. I have another bow that is set up to shoot field tips. So yeah, that I don't shoot broadheads on it. Now I might, I might someday try. I've got a set of mechanics. I might try those sometime, but I'd have to practice with them. And you know, by the time you practice with them, you shoot them once and they're destroyed. You know, unless That's you take one and glue one closed, and, and you know, so you can practice with that one. Um, but you know, with the, with the muzzies, I just change blades out and put dull ones in and shoot it, and then ready pull the, the tip off and and put the sharp ones in. That's right. Yes. I've been shooting them for decades, so I have plenty of used blades. <laughs> <laughs> I bet so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the 100 grain three blade. I started out with 145 or 125 grain four blade. And that's what I shot my first deer with. And it was not fast. Not at all. It was a full length, uh, full length arrow, aluminum arrow which meant it was pretty heavy anyway, with 125, I think, grain tip on it, uh, shooting at 52 pounds. Okay. And the deer was 40 yards away. I was 20 feet up in the tree. I'd be that high to get to the trail, get over the bush to get to the trail. And when that right. deer turned around, that arrow was hanging out. I think the fletching stopped it from going all the way through. Mm -hmm. That's right was not fast it was heavy and sharp broadheads and it just it just went through that deer and like i said i i, I seen it hanging out so far that i i swear the fletching stopped it from exiting the deer that's right yep now i've had now the other ones they they blow right through normally but uh, with them muzzies yeah. even if you hit a even if you hit a bone they shatter them and keep going Yes. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, I stuck one in a concrete block and and the, the insert broke in half and, and the shaft cracked by a little bit, but the broadhead was still sticking in the block. The rest of the shaft was sitting on the floor. <laughs> that, I yeah. Pulled the broadhead out. I still have it. I, I have no clue which one it is because I can't tell. <laughs> it didn't even mess right. up the point. That was when I was I had my store and I was trying to get ready for hunting season. It was late after worked all day long and I was getting tired and yeah, I was like, okay, I wrecked an arrow. Didn't wreck the broadhead, but I wrecked the arrow. Um, I just cut it down shorter, let my son use it. He was six six or seven at times in Cub Scouts. <laughs> He'd go there, shoot for hours at the range. Uh-huh. Yep. A lot of fun now. Now none of my kids do much shooting now, but they all got bows. You know, they all got high end bows. Having a story, right. you, you know, they're going to end up with high end bows. <laughs> yes. Yep. But yeah, that's the way it goes. I haven't shot mine in quite a while because, well, I can't do anything like that since April because that's when my first surgery was, and you know, there for a while I. After the second surgery, I couldn't even lift up one of these little, what are they, 20, 23 ounce water bottles. That was too heavy oh, no for me. Kidding. Yeah. And that was after the second one. The first one, it wasn't too bad, but every time I moved my elbows, my chest would keep moving and it never, and it didn't heal up. So I'd go in and put titanium plates in and hold it back together. Oh. And I mean, everything was, everything was sore. <laughs> everything was sore yeah. and hurt. 
So, yeah, you know, eventually I'll, I'll get recovered and and they'll start shooting a bow. But yeah, I think uh, I'll go and when I get to some of these events, I might just do some more interviews for the podcast. Oh, and and the one right. I just recorded just recorded earlier to come out when this comes out. Um, when I was at the Missouri Valley Outdoor Expo, which they have every year here in Nebraska. Um, right. I, the guys that set up gaming parks, there's three guys there that are certified um, safety instructors for tree stands. And, and, and this year I actually interviewed them. I, I spent about an hour and a half talking with them about all kinds of tree stand safety stuff. And the, the most um kind of unnerving or uh the stat was he said 82 percent of accidents are tree stand related really yeah 82 percent of the accidents involved in hunting are come from tree stands and he said 80 okay. percent of those accidents are from homemade tree stands no kidding yeah so if you want to have up your chances of having an accident make your own tree stand <laughs> I'm still using some I made years ago. So, <laughs> but I don't have cables or anything on them. I'm I'm using chain. Yeah, those so, those step a little bit better. And, and then, but, even though the the other the other stat that uh, when I get it all put together, I'll I'll put that as a podcast. I'm gonna try and work on it this weekend, so it should come out after this podcast uh, comes out next week, and. Uh, even though the this your safety harness and you should use a full heart, full body harness, uh, yep. even though that saves you from hitting the ground, you don't have very long. You got to get relief because if it cuts off the circulation in your legs enough, long enough, like five minutes, uh, you're gonna die uh, anyway. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. what saves you from dying instantly will kill you over a short period of time, and. <laughs> There, there's yeah you know, and you got to practice hanging off your trees your your harness and see how to recover from from there you know hang hang there and and how do you get back on and and using the uh the the lineman's rope with the persix knot right. on there uh, you know hook up to that and 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 then when you fall because you it stops you and then you there he's talking and i want to get to that will show you you know, how you can tie knots in, in that line, just slip knots, and then mm -hmm. tie a whole bunch of them as close as you can because they're about six inches apart. You put your feet on there and stand up, and you can slide your knot down. And then move, okay. and then move to the next knot. And when you step on it, it's going to slip and, and drop you down a little bit. And then you just move your knot down, so you're moving it about six inches at, at a time. So if you're 20 feet up in a tree, you know, it's going to take you 40 times to do it. <laughs> Yeah, because you move about six yes. inches at a time, but at least you're you know you're not hanging. Yes. And yep. He said one guy had had to do that one time. He is in a ladder stand, and two bucks were in fighting, knocked the ladder stand over. He couldn't <laughs> use it, knocked it out from underneath him, and and now he's hanging there. Right. And, and had had to recover. Yep. So. And he says, you have two of them, one that you're hang on the tree and then one you put around your waist because that one you can stand up on and relieve the pressure off your legs. Now, I know a lot of the okay. new harnesses come with the little foot strap you can drop down and get your one foot in and lift up, but those trying to get your foot in it is tough. And yes. the, other thing, the other thing is said is have your cell phone with you but have your cargo pants on and put it on the side cargo pockets. Because if, uh, if it's in your shirt pocket, you can't get to it. If it's in your back pocket, you can't get to it. The harness is in the way. Got to be on the side one and, and then you can pull it out and call somebody. Oh, okay. I well, never I thought of I that. Knew, <laughs> yeah, me neither. I knew there was a reason I started going to ground blinds. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not out of ground blinds more than anything. <clears throat> Yeah, I've I've hunted out of them. I still prefer to be up so I can see more. I can see what's going on a little better. But I, you know, in, in those winter days when it's cold and windy, oh, the blinds are nice. 
because you can take just a little That's small right. heater, just a small heater, and it'll keep you warm. You can take off your big heavy yeah. coat. That's I've, right. I've done that. You know, it's like okay, I don't need this coat. I'm too hot. I'm I'm dressed to be up in a tree stand in the wind. I'm out of the wind. I don't need this coat. Yeah. Yep. But you got to worry about shooting through your blind. Yeah. Um, I did that one time with the turkey. I had him so close uh, when I shot and missed. I thought, how did I miss? And uh, then, I don't know, half inch down on my blind was my broadhead hole. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it, especially, you know, compounds are, are, are really bad at that as well because your pins and your sights are up here tri level. Your arrow's down at your mouth level, and, you know, and that's that's what you know three inches. So it starts yeah. off three inches low, and you have to look at it. I know I was doing some little demonstration videos in the basement, and I had a bag up, and I'm shooting, you know, ten feet away from it, and and I because it's on top of a concrete block wall, and I don't want to hit that wall because the arrow's going to bounce back at us, and that knock is just about as dangerous as the point, and so I'm just like, okay, I'm. You know, making sure my my 60 yard pin is where it's going to hit the bag, you know, <laughs> so I got to make sure where I'm shooting because, you know, at that distance, your 70 yard pin is where your arrow is going to be hitting. And it's pretty close yeah. where it's at. That's something you have to think about when you're you're shooting out of a blind is where is the arrow actually going to go? Because it, it's right. slow and it catches up to it and then start dropping back down again. That, that's where the, the real close targets, you know, that they, they'll put them at five feet and everybody misses them. And I've had, I've had shooters say, well, I just sight down the arrow. You ever shot that way before? Well, no, I just sight down the arrow. Yeah. Well, that mm -hmm. don't work too well. <laughs> yeah, that's you, right. you might get it off, but there's no logic to it. I was at a shoot one time, was up on a platform and it was a gator and it was like five feet from the platform. And I knew my bow, you know, I'd, I'd gone through, I had a, a I think it was Archer's Advantage where it would go through and calculate all this stuff. Um, I have no clue where the software is for it anymore now, but uh, if I come across it, I might see if I can install it again. But um, it, it said on there, I had a chart at five feet, I used my 70 yard pin. So I'm full draw, I'm bending down, bending down, bending down. Finally, that that pin got there where it's supposed to be. And of course, you're in a really awkward position. You know, you're you're leaning down at, you know, a good 45 degree angle or better, depending on the rail to not fall over. And I shot right. and nailed it right where it's supposed to go. And and then of course the challenge was standing back up again because I was leaning over so far. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Finally, they don't look like anybody had any comments. Okay, I had to look over and check. It still says just one comment, and that's, I guess, my comment. <laughs> I don't know. I'll uh -huh. look at it later. But now, at least now I got something on my profile, and I'll put a little comment in there. And say direct them over here to the the uh, Facebook group and whatnot, and. But yeah, it's uh, it's been really great talking with you, and you know anybody that's been watching or listening this long, you know, I did go live on my uh, timeline, uh, so you can go out and look at my timeline and and catch it there. But it'll be posted in the Arch Talk One One Facebook group. It'll be posted in the video there, the video as well as on Learn to Fix It Yourself is the name of my YouTube channel, and then also you can listen to the audio part of it on Spotify. And other places they do podcasts. I know Apple's got some, and I don't remember who else got them, but I sent Spotify and it sends them all out. And then also, um, I, you can listen to it on Audible. You know, normally Audible, mm -hmm. you buy the audio books, you know, um, but mm -hmm. the podcast is free. You just go up there and sign up for it. And and I have a lot of people listen to it that way because then as I post one, it, it just automatically adds it to the list and just play it. And, and it's kind of cool that way. Yeah. I don't listen to them because I recorded them. <laughs> well, it's the body that, on my computer here. <laughs> that's right. Yep. But it's 
it's been a whole lot of fun talking with you. And I, I know you're going to uh, keep shooting as long as you can. And I'm going to try and get back into shooting and keep shooting as long as I can. And um, okay, get out there and it might get to the point where where I'm I'm not shooting, but I'm going to going to some of the events. I as as things loosen up here, where I can actually walk enough to to walk around a course. And right now, I that's I wouldn't make it around the course just carrying the bow. I might make it five or ten targets, and that'd be about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if I can get that part going first, then yeah, I went to uh, at work. They had uh, soccer tickets that we get for Rigo watched the. Uh, University of Nebraska Omaha soccer team play and you know I had rehab so I did the bike and the arms and and the the treadmill and you know kind of tired and you get home and then where we parked and this as well you had to go up these steps and then we went down a ramp and come to find out we got to park the other in the parking garage and walk straight out been, been there so we walked <laughs> in that way I was like wait a minute we've never been there I've never been there I graduated from I mean, University of Nebraska Omaha but they didn't have a soccer field there and they didn't have a parking garage there and you know, they didn't have a whole bunch of stuff because that was that was well 86 so that's almost 40 years ago when i was there uh so things have right. changed a little and, and then the tickets are on row u first one down is a it was clear up there so i got to the steps and, and there wasn't many people there um right. i think there's four sections Everybody could sat in one section and still had chairs left. So, yeah, there, there was plenty of chairs open. And it's like, my wife's up, you know, dozen steps. And I'll look up and it's like, I ain't making it up there. <laughs> I'm already worn out because I'm already had my, my extent of my workout <laughs> doing that. So I went up about three or four steps. And, and I was like, that's right. I, I sat down and it's like, I couldn't see all the field because where the, the players play, there's a, um, like a little glass thing that goes over and kind of curve thing. So then I sat okay. there for a while and I got up three or four more rows and then so I could actually see the all field field and 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 then it's like okay to go to the bathroom you got to go halfway up over down some steps to the bathroom back up steps back down it's like oh, I'm glad it's I didn't have to go till till the second half when the second half started I, I went and it's like man by the time I got done I was moving really slow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I bet. Uh, uh, really slow, and and I'm still hurting from it now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be a while before I can actually shoot a bow. <laughs> but I'll I'll get there. You know, in, in the rehab, yeah. we'll 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 tailor the rehab here in a little bit in a month or so to uh, to get my archery muscles back up. Because right. a normal rehab rehab don't do them when you do an arm, you know, like a bicycle type arm thing. You know, that don't do anything for your archery muscles. Okay. Because this is not pushing off to the side and pulling using using your back. So uh, we got some I think we can use, um, you know, go through the same motion. I used to, when I go to the gym all the time, I would, one of the things you could pull on, they, they kind of hang on the wall and I would stand there and I'd, I'd use it to pull you know, like I'm drawing a bow you know, right. and then uh, the other, I turn around and push away, you know, like I'm pushing the bow out to, to work those muscles. And, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be there. I'll, I'll, I'll do another podcast kind of talk. I talked about the the first thing going on and then, and then I need to do another video of the, of the second thing. And then another video I'll, I'll do of me, you know, how I'm getting archery back going and, and skating going back and, I went skating for the first time last night and oh man, it was the first few laps was just, just painful. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, oh, everything so. hurt. And then I took a break and I ended up getting about 20 minutes of skating in, but it took me four times to do it. I had to rest three times, you know, for five, yeah. 10, 15 minutes in between. And, you know, you, you get going out there and my heart rate's higher than normally. I have to be going really fast to get it up that high. So uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little little bit before i can get back but you know at least i can talk about <laughs> archers about all their the stuff they're doing that's right yep yeah yeah that, that's fun i i enjoy talking to archers and you know all over the world and and i have talked to archers all over the world uh the group 
you know, Archer Talk 101 Facebook group has got archers from uh, so from countries that you have to Google to figure out where it's at. That's right. You yes. Know, it's like they're in this city and this in this state, and it's like, where's that at? That's some little bitty state outside of Italy or or out in uh, Croatia or Serbia. Um, I don't think I've talked to anybody actually in Russia or China yet, but um, Germany and all, all, all over the all over the world. Like I can't remember all the countries. I should have took a pen and marked, you know, wrote them down, but I didn't. I just, you know, I've talked to a couple in Africa and, of course, United States. A lot of them in the United States and Canada and nobody in Mexico right. yet that I can remember of that actually was in Mexico, but. Oh, that's no, okay. it, it's fun, and and like you like was talk about you know if you have, um you know if you have a bow in your hand, and you know you're an archer, you can go up and talk to them. That's now, right. Now if they don't speak your language, um, you know what Google Translate works really well. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you can you can not some of them you can do tech you know you can voice, but. You know the Google Translate on computer. I can type it in because I've done that too. Send a message to somebody, and they'll respond respond back. You know, in another language sometimes, and then I'll just stick it in there, and it'll figure out what it is. Like, oh, okay, respond back. I had one guy was responding back to him. You know, both in English and in whatever his language was. I don't remember now what it is, but you know that's so. There's with the phones nowadays, a lot of them you can talk in it, and it'll text it you know you, you talk and it texts and translates it and the other person and you know all kinds of stuff now and, and with the ai that's out now it's it's there's no reason why we couldn't talk in different languages now it may not translate exactly right but talk to somebody in in the south and talk to somebody in the east coast the west coast and up north and sometimes we can't understand each other <laughs> that's right exactly <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, what are you saying? That's all right. Uh, yep. I I had um when I was at Cabela's, yeah, I was at Cabela's, uh, we had a guy come come in that was from overseas. He's from England. Another guy was from Ireland or Scotland. I think my Scotland. And I'm talking to him, and the one I had the most trouble understanding was a guy from England. Right. I had trouble understanding what he's saying. I had to really really pay attention to what he's saying and, and translate almost you know the other guys i didn't have any problem i just talked to him and the, the guy from england his accent and the way he said stuff was just so much different and i, I hadn't really heard that dialogue you know dialect that much to figure it out you know right like doing martial arts for 20 years you kind of understand how the koreans talk and, and it's like Okay, you understand them, and somebody else is like, "What do you say? What do you say?" Oh, well, he said this because you've been hearing it for twenty years, so you knew, <laughs> you, you you knew yep. you knew what he said and what he was meaning by it, and and you know, yep, that's that's the nice thing. If you're an archer and you have a bow in your hand, and another archer a bow in their hand, you know what? Go up and say hi to them because ninety nine percent right. of the time they're going to talk to you unless they're in the middle of something. You know, then yeah. if they're on the firing line getting ready to draw their bow back, that's not the time to talk to them. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. But but when they're off the line, hey, they'll be glad to tell and help you out. A lot of them too, they'll they'll help you out. Uh, I was talking to one guy and he says the guy he was compete competing against was actually helping him through a problem he was having. Yes. Yep. And, and it, the only advantage the guy had was made you better, which forced him to be better. You know, like you're saying, you like to shoot the senior division because the masters is a little too hard. Um, and, you know, let, let's let's have a little competition and, you know, make it a little challenge and, you know, it makes you get better. That's right. Yep. Well, I think it's time to... Um, head in it's almost nine o'clock here um and you're in the same time zone i am so yeah it's it's getting close for um, me to go to bed <laughs> that's right we're getting at the age the nine o'clock is uh almost yeah. bedtime well when when i get up about well 
the alarm goes off at five, but normally I'm up three thirty, four o'clock. I'm awake anyway. So if I go too late, I don't get much sleep. <laughs> then it makes it hard, hard for the day <laughs> and, and working. I'm working again now, so I can't just be up for a couple hours and then take a nap. <laughs> Right. Like, like yeah. I was doing, but you know, it's it, it's one of those things that, well, I I went back to work uh, uh just over a year ago, a year and a few days ago, and, and then of course since April I've been mostly off until the last couple of weeks. I'm finally back. I'm still not full time yet because going to rehab three times a day, and I work in Omaha, and it's it's about forty forty five minute drive on a on good day. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the rehab, which is actually further west than I am, uh, but I'm only okay. about ten miles from it. So uh, I I leave an hour before I need to be there, <laughs> just because you never know. Yeah, you get traffic and um, yeah, I'm I'm about four. Well, the GPS says it's forty minutes to work from where I live, and it's probably another okay. ten minutes the other one. So it's you know it's it's a fifty minute drive, you know according yeah. to the GPS. To, to where I'm going 50, 55 minutes. So, you know, I leave it at 2.30 so I can be there for a 3.40 appointment. Normally, I'm there a little early. I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> but, that's right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, so, and then I have another doctor's appointment Thursday afternoon. So I can work pretty much a full day there. And then normally on Thursdays is the day now that I've got set up. But I forgot to change my time and I actually recorded a uh, a video earlier earlier today, another Zoom call before this one. And okay. Yeah. So sometimes I get two in a row and sometimes I don't. And I just get them out. I okay. I I had I'd been doing two a week until you know the surgery, and then I wasn't getting any out because yeah, I couldn't record. I couldn't sit long enough to record anything. And just okay. after the second surgery. Um, like the next day after I got home, um, I had, I had one had gotten scheduled in there. And so I recorded it. And then I just discovered here a week, a couple weeks ago that I hadn't even posted it. <laughs> so no so I, I probably four, four podcasts earlier, I recorded it like two months before. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. That's one of the things when you're, when you're more focused on, on, you know, trying to heal than getting podcasts out. Now, now I've got, I'm getting enough now where I'm, I'm back up to two a week. Mon Mondays and Fridays is when I post the new, new video. Oh, um, it comes out on Spotify at six o'clock in the morning. And then I post it on the YouTube um, channel the next day at six at night. And then I also have on, um, my uh, YouTube channel and RS, RSS feed from Spotify, which it comes out as RSS feed um, when when it releases, you know, at six in the morning. But I've got a regular video that comes out, you know, with all the the YouTube, you know, ending screens and you know little boxes come up. But the other one's just a raw feed where there's no 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 things on. It's just a raw feed, so get they'll get out there and. And then I'll have I'll have the interview with the gaming parks here. I'm going to work on that this weekend, so that should be coming out here in no. a little bit. And and then that yeah. that that'll be some good information. I got a lot of good information in that video. I recorded it like an hour and a half long. I, I interviewed them, and you know the, the three guys there. There's all kinds of stuff, and they're showing stuff. And yeah, <laughs> I, I've got I got an hour and a half long video. And it'll probably take me two to three hours to edit the video. Right. Yep. Because you have to listen to the video and then decide you want to keep it. And then you got to filter stuff out and, you know, cut stuff and, you know, do some transitions. And so, yeah, it's it's at least as as long plus half again as long to edit them. And But then you get a little cleaner video. But a lot of good information, and I'll be getting out. So I'm kind of promoting yeah. that 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 podcast coming up, and it should be the one right after this one, um, because I, I I've got this weekend to work on it, and I don't have any podcast scheduled before I get that one out. So 
uh, that's my goal is get that one done and, and going in there and a lot of good information that a lot of hunters don't realize and a lot of stuff I didn't realize. And, you know, I've been around a lot of stuff on, on safety and, you know, going into, you know, harness safety and businesses when they have somebody that's, that's on a harness, they have to have a plan to get them off because they know right. that you can't, you can't stay there. So they're not just as a fall arrest, but they also have uh, a, another plan on how to rescue them. And, and that's okay. a whole big thing, which, which uh, as bow hunters, we don't have that plan. We don't, we don't know what to do to rescue ourselves because lots of times, there's nobody within shouting distance. We're normally in a tree stand by ourselves. That's and right. You might have you yeah. might have a hunting partner somewhere that's out there, but they're not going to come until it's time to close. And if you were going to meet them, they're going to have to wait for oh, they're not coming and come find you. So we yes. know how to yep. we know how to rescue ourselves, and and that's going to be something that that I think you know once I get where I can actually put a harness on. <laughs> I can't, That's I don't dare I, put a harness on right now. I, uh, if I cough or sneeze, I have to kind of support my chest because <laughs> that, right. that makes it, that makes it hurt. So I'm not putting a harness on and hanging on it because that is not going to feel good. So I'm not getting anything <laughs> elevated more than a couple of steps. On. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hey, it's been great talking with you. Uh, we, we got to, get out of here so we can get ready for for bed and do what we got to do the evening and uh and so it's been real nice talking to you and i'm i'm sure we'll talk again later and you know if you know of any events coming up uh go ahead and post a link to that event in the arch talk 101 facebook group um there you know you know let's promote the archery in there uh we don't allow anybody to sell anything in there uh right. so it's it's not a site you can sell your bows and your equipment and your t-shirts and all that other stuff uh i don't allow that in any of my groups uh because it's not there to be you know sold to and and so you get either get the post yeah. removed or moved and banned <laughs> you bet okay you, you've seen all these archery t-shirts you know if you join so it joins the group first thing you just post one of those t-shirts you're getting removed and banned yeah. from the group and generally, it's because you've been on Facebook less than a year. And That's right. Yeah. yeah. The ones I like is the ones like, okay, here's my e uh, email address, John Doe at something. No, delete, ban you. <laughs> yeah. Don't, uh -huh. You know, John Doe or, or John Smith. You know, anytime I see that email, I know it's a fake email. Because especially when you get two people join with the same email address. Yeah. Decline, yeah. Decline, decline. I don't even want to right. mess with them because they're always accounts less than six months old. So, uh huh. Anyway, my name is Roy Canterbury. I've been the host today on Arch Truck One and One uh, with Spanky, and we have uh, a, a lot of good information that we got out. Make sure you listen um, to the other podcasts, especially make sure you listen for that tree stand safety one. You know, all of us archers that get up in a tree stand, uh, we need to pay attention to that because. Um, the, the safety harness can save your life, but it can also kill you. So make sure you listen to that and we'll get some good information from the guys that are certified to teach us all that. So mm -hmm. thanks for being on and we'll see you later. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Bye.